Isn't that a wonderful sight? Good evening. I'm Bill Kingsley, principal of Loring Animal King High School. Would you please stand for the national anthem and remain standing for the alma mater. Please be seated. <laughs> what a beautiful night for a graduation. Welcome Board of Education, Central Office personnel, teachers, parents, and friends to tonight's commencement ceremony. This is a significant day in all of our lives. For the representatives of Lorraine City Schools, it marks the end of what we consider a job well done. Through the hard work of the teachers and the students, these seniors have the skills to deal with the many challenges that will face them. For the parents, it marks the end of a very interesting maturation process. I am not sure how many of these seniors realize the number of tears that were shed by their mothers when they were first sent to kindergarten. As parents, we have survived their dating and curfews, their involvement in sports, their mood changes, 
science projects, term papers, computers that crash, and was generally referred to as the teenage years. For students, today marks a transition, not an end or a beginning. Some will go to work, some will continue their education, but all leave with some things in common. They have an education that will allow them to compete with anyone. They have the courage to do what is right and not what is convenient. And they have enough common sense to treat each other with respect and to look for what is truly important in life, peace and goodwill. Congratulations, class of 1999. I would like to introduce our guest tonight. First, Nicholas Hutlock, superintendent, please stand. Members of the Lorraine City Board of Education, Raul Ramos, president. Keith Lilly, vice president. Janine Donaldson, board member. Ann Mensendick Jensen, board member. Dr. Thomas Wood, board member. Central Office personnel here today, Mr. David Majeski, Dr. Ed Branham, Dr. Harrison Jackson, Mr. Dan DiNicola, and Mr. Lyle Troyer. From Lorraine Admiral King, the following people have worked very closely with your children over the past four years. Counselors Thurman Snipes, Al Gonis, Becky Farr, and Betty Huffman. Administrators, Ron Von Gutten, Jermaine Jackson, Ed Chavez, Joe Knoll, and Ron Major. Thank you. We're also very pleased to recognize members of the teaching staff at King who have taken time out of their very busy day to be here tonight to share your celebration. Staff, will you please stand? Thank you. At this time, we're going to honor seniors who have excelled in service and scholarship. I'd like to introduce Ron Major, who will read the students' names. Mr. Major is an assistant principal at King and will retire this year with 32 years of dedicated service to the system. Mr. Major. Thank you, Mr. Kingsley. Back in 1963, when I graduated from Admiral King, I never had any idea that I would ever get the opportunity to graduate once again. And I thank you, class of 99, for letting me walk with you. At this time, I'm going to recognize the top 5% of the senior class who have excelled in service to the school. I will read them in alphabetical order. Their names will be placed on the service plaque at the school. Students, please stand and remain standing when I call your name. Jacqueline Barron. Michelle Brown. Anne Marie Burgett. Gloria DeJesus. Catherine Ferraro. Tara Hawthorne, Aaron Heflin, Sarah Hurlbud, Leslie Cantor, Jose Marin, Lori Milovich, Daniel Ramos, Jennifer Rogers, Nathan Scheibel, Alicia Sankeys. The number one person in service credits was Michelle Brown. Thank you. 
Now we're going to recognize the top 5% of the senior class academically. I will read the names in alphabetical order. Their counselors will give them honor cords as they are recognized. Their names will be placed on the honor plaque in the school. Students, please stand when I call your name and remain standing. Joanne Barron. Anne Marie Burgett. David Cardarelli. Denise Cardarelli. Catherine Ferraro. Aaron Heflin. Leslie Megan Cantor. Robert Lang. David Malinowski. Kenneth Mantini. Ryan Mahalski. Lori Milovich. Daniel Ramos. Jeremy Rivera. Nathan Scheibel. The salutatorian for the class of 1999 is Anne Marie Burgett. The valedictorian for the class of 1999 is Nathan Scheibel. Thank you. The following students have earned an, a total of $1,347,693 in scholarship monies this year, a very impressive total. We want to recognize those seniors who have been offered scholarships. Students, please stand when I call your name and remain standing until the list is complete. Diane Aniskevich, Jacqueline Barron, Joanne Barron, Marshall Brown, Tiffany Bullard, Ann Burgett, David Cardarelli, Denise Cardarelli, Frank Salozzi, Megan Dandria, Erica Diedrich, Michael Dembeck, Carrie Donaldson, Catherine Ferraro, Jason Flowers, Ricky Ford, Vaughn Francis, Angela Garner, Shante Hagwood, Tara Hawthorne, Aaron Heflin, Brian Hilko, Isa Howard, Sharice Hughes, Sarah Hurlbud, Tamika Jackson, Cassandra Johnson, Leslie Megan Cantor, Tarian Kimmy, Robert Lang, Annalisa Longo, David Malinowski, Ken Mantini, Jose Marin, Mindy McKillop, Ryan Mahalski, Lori Milovich, James Nikoloff, Brittany Okajic, Brett Palermo, AJ Pulaski, 
Daniel Raul Ramos, Lisette Ramos, Rebecca Ramos, Taylor Richardson, Kenny Rivas, David Rivera, Jeremy Rivera, Linda Rivera, Jennifer Rogers, Esperanza Sanchez, Nate Scheibel, Elizabeth Schilla, Victoria Schofo, Alicia Sankis, Zach Schilwachter, Latoya Smith, Emily Stamitti, Tiffany Taylor, Katie Thompson, Jessica Toth, 1,347,693 dollars. Congratulations. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to introduce the superintendent of the Lorraine City Schools, Mr. Nicholas Hutlock, who will introduce our class speakers. Mr. Hutlock. Good evening. Today marks the 120th consecutive year that Lorraine the senior class, their teachers, parents, and friends have joined together in our celebration of high school graduation. This year's graduating class, the class of 1999, is the last graduating class of the 20th century, the last graduating class of the second millennium. These young men and women graduating today will be the citizens and the leaders of our community as we go into the 21st century. We pray that each of you will successfully meet the challenges which lie ahead of you. As superintendent, it is my honor to have the privilege of introducing the members of the graduating class who have been selected to address their fellow students. Our graduates now, sorry. Our first speaker has been selected by the National Honor Society. Please join me in welcoming Nathan Scheibel. Nathan is the son of Jim and Kay Scheibel. Nate is president of the National Honor Society and valedictorian of his class. Nathan has been active in marching band, jazz band, and tennis. He has also helped produce the WLAK News, which is televised every morning throughout the school. He has received an academic letter all four years of high school and was a member of the academic challenge team. He's listed in the who's who among American high school students. He has volunteered service to the Lorraine community through the Leo Club. He has received the Greater Cleveland Phi Beta Kappa Award for academic excellence and service to the community. He has received the Lorraine Community Foundation, the Dr. Alfred J. Lozer Foundation, the Phi Delta Kappa, the Duzendon, and the Italian American Veterans Scholarships. Nate has also received the scholarship from the state of Ohio for passing all five parts of the 12th grade proficiency test. Nate will be attending Ohio University this fall, majoring in secondary education, English, and communications. Nathan. Thank you, Mr. Hutlock. In today's society, popular culture is extremely influential in the lives of all of us. Popular culture encompasses a wide range of aspects in our lives, ranging from music to art to fashion. But to many, the most influential of all these aspects is television. Beyond providing us with entertainment, television imitates our lives in such forms as cartoons, sitcoms, and soap operas. It is almost as if television acts as a mirror to the experiences, trials, and tribulations that we face every day in the real world. As children, our first encounter with TV is usually with cartoons. We'd wake up early Saturday morning to watch such favorites as The Transformers, Voltron, Rainbow Bright, He-Man, and The Care Bears. And without even knowing it, companies like Warner Brothers, Hanna-Barbera, and Disney were offering cartoons that would have a large impact on our lives. Shows like Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids weren't just about a gang of friends doing their thing. 
They were about teaching us to accept each other's place in life and respect people like Mushmouth or Donald regardless of imperfections or appearance. There were the Smurfs, the Peanut Gang, and the Muppet Babies who, just like Fat Albert, taught us how to live together in harmony in accepting each other's individuality. Cartoons may have influ influenced us in other areas. For those people who watched Inspector Gadget a lot, they may have been influenced to become detectives. For those who really liked G.I. Joe, they may have joined the Army. For those who are faithful fans of Alvin and the Chipmunks, they may have been influenced to study genetics. And those children who are now being raised on The Simpsons will probably be influenced to become psychologists when they grow up. Cartoons teach us to never give up. Wile E. Coyote never gave up on his mission of capturing the Roadrunner. Cartoons teach us to share the spotlight once in a while. Even Bugs Bunny let Daffy Duck get some occasional recognition. Cartoons have taught us four important painters from the Renaissance in the form of Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Cartoons teach us problem-solving skills, Scooby-Doo. Cartoons show us that we all have to act a little crazy every once in a while, the Tasmanian Devil. Cartoons show us that we all have strength hidden within us, Popeye. Cartoons show us that those who are favored don't always win, Underdog. Cartoons show us the past, the Flintstones, and cartoons show us the future, the Jetsons. But the overall importance of cartoons as they apply to life is the fact that they provide some comic relief in our everyday routine and allow us to look at life in a not so serious light. Not everything in life revolves around politics, sex, and money. That is why we have humor. Humor is necessary in everyday life. Cartoons reveal this to us when we are children, so when we grow to be adults, we can realize that there is a lighter side to life. Cartoons force us to laugh. If you're looking for sanity, there's no recipe like laughter. It's right up there with love and communication in the hierarchy of our needs. We have to enjoy the world we have and utilize the capabilities we have in our life to the fullest. It's okay to have fun in life no matter what we may pursue in the future. Not everything in life has to be serious. And now, just to reiterate the theme and stress the need for comic relief in our lives, I will offer you a quote from my favorite cartoon philosopher, Homer Simpson, who once stated, the answers to life problems aren't found at the bottom of a bottle, they're found on TV. Our next speaker was chosen by the senior class to address the graduates. Please join me in welcoming Tara Hawthorne. Tara is the daughter of Jennifer Holmes, and during her four years at Lorraine Admiral King, she's earned varsity letters in volleyball and track. She's been very active in the Multicultural Awareness Group, the Senior Committee, and the Chamber Choir. Tara has also per participated in the Lorraine International Festival, and this year she will be the African American Princess at this festival. Tara will be attending the Ohio State University, uh, supported by a Young Scholars Scholarship, as well as the OSU Minority Scholarship. She additionally, she's received scholarships from the following organizations, Lorraine Community Foundation, the Negro Woman's Council, the Lorraine County Alliance of Black Educators. Tara will major in pre-law at Ohio State. Tara. Thank you, Mr. Hotlock. As we sit here waiting to receive our diplomas and to throw our caps in celebration of our achievement, we look around at our classmates and think of all the great memories we shared, and we are reminded of how much we have matured. Our social and academic growth and development during high school may be best illustrated by referring to some well-known sitcom characters. When we enter Lorraine Emerald King as freshmen, our maturity level may have been comparable to that of Screech Powers from Saved by the Bell. Like Screech, we were eager to please and assist our new teachers, anxious about meeting new classmates, and rarely interacted with anyone beyond our circle of friends. Assuming the usual freshman status, we naively ventured through the hallways in search of the fourth floor classrooms and the school pool as directed by the snickering upperclassmen. Our academic menus include the four basic food groups, meaning there were no desserts or no electives. This gave us the foundation we need as we moved on to greater academic challenges during our sophomore year. Steve Urkel from Family Matters may best characterize us at this stage of maturity. Having made a small stride toward gaining popularity, we were ready to meet new people and try new ventures. Our goal, as with Steve, was to simply fit in. Another plus to being a sophomore is that it was now our turn to pick on the freshmen who enter Lorraine Emerald King. 
Junior year became even better. We were now the Ashley Banks of our high school. We were more self-confident, more stylish, and yet we looked up to the Will Smiths of the upperclassmen. We became more active in and out of school. We went out with friends, went on dates, and started to seriously decide what our goals in life were going to be after high school. Our final year has come, and we've successfully met the challenges of high school, academically, socially, and emotionally. Ready or not, we must now transform ourselves into the Brandon Washes, Samantha Casellis, and Stefan Urkels of today. Wherever our future may lead, we must take with us the leadership skills, scholastic abilities, and emotional maturity we have gained. With these choices, we can make our choice to become a Dr. Heath Huxtable, attorney Allie McBeal, or Principal Richard Belding. I wish everyone the best of luck, and I leave you with a famous quote from Robin Leach, Champagne wishes and caviar dreams. Our third speaker this evening was, has been selected by the faculty. Please join me in welcoming Anne Marie Bergen. <clears throat> Anne is the daughter of Lawrence and Marie Bergen. She is also the salutatorian of her class. She has received honors from the Cleveland Technical Societies Council, was a finalist in the Lorain County Community College Poetry Competition, and has been an ambassador for the Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership Foundation. She's been three years, has been a member of the National Honor Society. She's received scholarships from the following, the Anthony V. Thomas Foundation for Education, the Partners in Excellence Program, and the Dr. Alfred J. Lozier Memorial Scholarship. In addition, Anne has also received a scholarship from the state of Ohio for passing all five parts of the 12th grade proficiency test. Anne will attend the University of Akron this fall and major in speech and language pathology. Anne? Thank you, Mr. Hutlock. Lorraine Emerald King's graduating class of 1999 would like to think of itself as the bold and the beautiful, but really we are the young and the restless. As the world has turned these past four years, we have spent the days of our lives in the halls of Lorraine Emerald King. But now, since we only have one life to live, the time has come for us to find our own guiding light, which will lead us into another world, and hopefully not into a general hospital. As I think back, however, one particular memory concerning soap operas comes to mind. Strangely enough, is a bit of advice from my father. He said, and I quote, soap operas are time wasting. And I can honestly stand here and tell you that he is absolutely right. The characters in these TV shows wake up every morning to walk around expensive homes, wear designer clothes, and talk to themselves out loud about their own lives. But just to add a little excitement to the plot, and to give the characters something to talk to themselves about, villains, vamps, and vicious exes are written into the script. And then for flavor, a pinch of betrayal, lust, and jealousy is added. So where does this spicy blend leave us, being the TV viewer? Well, what we are left with is a story that never seems to end or get resolved. Or in other words, we are left with a soap opera. After spending four years in Lorraine Emerald King High School, I am sure we all have seen, or at least been caught up in a few, real-life soap operas ourselves. But it is my hope as we search for that guiding light that will lead us into another world, that we will rise above these petty soap opera plots. The characters that we watch on TV are for our own entertainment. The rash decisions and dramatic speeches they always seem to make have no real-life consequences but the words we say and the decisions that we make do. We can have just as much passion for life as there is on the soaps, but unless there is something behind what we feel, our ambitions are as empty as the heart of our favorite villain. As we continue on in life, each one of us will find our different passions. Therefore, let the next few years of our lives be full of discovery. Let us find what we are passionate about or build upon those passions we already have. Remember, Emotions, friendships, and hardships are just a few of the examples of the very things that motivate us to learn more about ourselves. And in a world of soap opera plots, knowing yourself is your best defense against them. But 
Before we dismiss these melodramatic soap operas completely from our own lives, let us try to learn something from them. The characters that always seem to be the most enjoyable are the ones who always follow their own lead. But as a consequence to their actions, they also seem to be the ones who always end up enduring the most. As difficult as it is at times, stay true to yourself. This way you won't have to search too far to find that guiding light, because it will be right inside of you, leading you where you need to go. And everyone here will get where they need to go, because we all have been given everything we need to succeed. Yet how we all reach success will be totally different. We have been building up our potential to be just as successful as the people we watch on TV through the use of education. And I can assure you that our minds are more beautiful than any soap opera star's body. The reason for this is that there are dreamers and serious thinkers in this class. There are planners and there are creators. Then there are also leaders and great achievers. We are the people who do not need a script to tell us how to act. We have been preparing for and are now ready for the greatest audition of our lives. There's a new impromptu show starting next season. It is called Life After High School. Sometimes it will be a comedy and other times it will be a drama but we all will rely on our talent to take us only so far, and the rest will have to be learned on a job. So as this daytime drama nears to a close, all that can be said is stay tuned, because you never know how the lives of the young and the restless will turn out. And now is my absolute pleasure to present to you Lorraine Emerald Kings, graduating class of 1999. We'll now have the chamber choir sing, maybe someday.
At this time, I want to call upon Board President Raul Ramos to say a few words as we go into the presentation of our diplomas. Thank you, Mr. Kingsley. As the last in a series of speakers, I promise you that I'll be brief, and I was reminded that by the rest of the board there, and the superintendent and everybody else sitting back there. Because uh, basically I've gone through personally three graduations. I remember what I did before the graduation ceremony. I certainly remember what I did afterwards, but I don't remember anything that any speaker said. So I know it's the same here. Nonetheless, I offer my most sincere and warm congratulations to the Lorraine Emerald King class of 1999. They're timing me and I told them that didn't count. Congratulations to you for all the years of effort that helped you reach this milestone. I also very humbly and personally offer my appreciation and congratulations to all faculty and staff, parents, mentors, guardians, and others who have supported, cared for, and loved you throughout your lives. And thanks in advance to all those who will do so for you in the future. As I think of all the years that you have been in school, I can't help but think about all the changes you've experienced thus far in your lives. While you were a student, a great deal has happened in the world. Consider just these uh, events. First of all, Russia broke up. The globe warmed up. Michael Jordan gave it up. Mike Tyson was locked up. Part of the Ford plant closed up. Some of you, I know, were swept up. Yeah, there was a groan back there. Monica spoke up. Bill Clinton fessed up. The press ate it up, which made some of us want to throw up. And through all of this, you grew up. You went from plugging plugging in a Nintendo to play a game on your TV to plugging into the world via the internet. You went from watching Sesame Street and Saved by the Bell to Dawson's Creek and Party of Five. You went from underoos to tattoos. My point in all of this is if you've experienced a lot of changes in your lives, and as change has been a part of your past, so too will it be part of your future. I encourage you to be agents of change and being responsible when responding to it and to creating change and when and where you think it is needed. There's an old belief that about the ocean that inevitably one wave comes along that is greater than any wave before it. This wave is called the ninth wave. It is powerful. It is believed that there is no greater force. Today you have the opportunity to be this great and powerful wave. As individuals and together as a generation, you can be the ninth wave and bring with it significant changes to our future. It is my hope that the changes you make to this world are magnificent. You have the opportunity. You have the capability. You are prepared now to catch this wave. Catch it with the best that is in you and ride it all the way to the shore. As your education at Lorraine Admiral King has changed you, I want to remind you that you must continue to learn, to continue to change. The end of high school is not the end of your homework. In fact, there is much more to learn, much more to change. I encourage you to continue to learn beyond tonight and next year and in many years ahead. And I leave you with the thought as you think about all this that there is out there to learn. You should have education enough so that you won't have to look up to people and then more education so that you will be wise enough not to look down on people. And to the audience, I say to you, that the 1999 graduating class of Lorraine Admiral King High School is the last graduating class of the 1900s. And 
I'm sure you'll agree with me that we have truly saved the best for last. Thank you. We're now coming to uh, the main event, which is the presentation of the diplomas. This is a serious and an important event in your children's lives and in your lives. We request polite applause when names are called. Thank you. Mrs. Jackson will now call the roll of our 1999 graduates who will be given their diplomas by Mr. Hutlock and Mr. Ramos. to have the opportunity to present the last class of the century, the class of 1999, as they receive their diplomas and go on to meet even greater challenges. Sarah Abella. Stephanie Ackerman. Jesse Adams, Alexis Alicia, Carrie Donaldson, Tamika Jackson, Esperanza Sanchez. Alexis Alicia Kelly Alloway Sarah Alloway Bill Amon Lisa Anthony Diane Aniskevitz receiving the honors diploma. Louis Sorocho. Angela Azarello. Joshua Ball. Jacqueline Barron. Joanne Barron receiving the honors diploma. Eddie Barnes. Joshua Barth. Kara Smeagle. John Belt. Nicholas Byers.
Marshall Brown. Michelle Brown. Oh, we need your attention and out of respect for those who have to be called nets, please. Regina Brown Lind. Scott Browning. Kathleen Bruderer, Christine Brune, <laughs> Tiffany Bullard, <laughs> Anne Marie Burgett receiving the honors diploma, <laughs> Ursula Burns. Jason Busher, Shanice Calhoun, Sonia Carabello, David Cotterelli receiving the honors diploma, Denise Cotterelli receiving the honors diploma. Brock Kastner, Kenneth Kastner, William Kastner, Frank Salozzi, Rachel Charlton, Aaron Chesney, Shadika Coleman, Kimberly Cordy, Marissa Cordy receiving the honors diploma, Misty Crabtree. Megan DeAndrea, Erica Diedrich receiving the honors diploma, Alexis De Jesus, Gloria De Jesus, Michael Dimbeck. Michelle Deshik, Emily Diaz, Darcy Dittmer, Elliot Feliciano, Catherine Ferraro receiving the honors diploma. Nicole Fisk. Jason Flowers receiving the honors diploma. Ricky Ford. Gregory Fortney. Amanda Foss. Von Michael Francis. Michelle Garcia. Angela Garner. Barbara Gerritsen. 
Lisa Gittich. Amanda Gillespie. Nathan Getz. Barbara Gonzalez. Jeffrey Gresco. Natasha Grafia. Chad Griffin. Shante Hagwood. Sarah Hall. Marad Hannibal. Joseph Harkless. Jason Harris. Tiffany Harris. Nathaniel Haslidge. Tara Jovan Hawthorne. Aaron Heflin receiving the honors diploma. Aaron Heydrich. Billy Henline. Brian Herbert. Brian Hilco. Keith Hiltobeidel. Latasha Hogan. Letitia Hoskins. Isa Howard. Ramona Hudson. Sharice Hughes. Sarah Herbutt receiving the honors diploma. Angela Jackson. Jackie Jackson. Lonnie Jackson. Patricia Jackson. Frank Jacobic. Damian Jones. Andrea Cato. Leslie Megan Cantor receiving the honors diploma. Danielle Kelly. Torian Kimmy. John Kincaid. David Costco Jr. Robert Lang receiving the honors diploma. John LeBron. Colin Lee. Timothy Lee. Erica Lewis. Brooke Little. Anna 
Lisa Longo. Nefteria Lucky. James Lamadou the second. David Melanowski receiving the honors diploma. Tabitha Malone. Joseph Minacci. Tara Mancuso. Kenneth Mantini receiving the honors diploma. Jose Marine. Michael Marrero. Raymond Martinez. David Mate the Second. Logan MacArthur. Mindy McKillop. Shante McShepard. Jennifer Michaels. Ryan Maholski receiving the honors diploma. Lori Milovich receiving the honors diploma. Melissa Miranda. Luke Mischick. Jose Montezuma. Elizabeth Morgan. Marty Muniz. Joseph Raymond Nazario Jr. James Nikoloff receiving the honors diploma. Brittany Okachik. Brett Palermo. Nathan Pardon. David Peoples. Michelle Peoples. Bradford Perch. Andrea Petrillo. Dwayne Plowden. A.J. Pulowski the second. Angel Ramos the second. I'm Angel Ramos the third, excuse me. Daniel Ramos receiving the honors diploma. Lisette Ramos. Rebecca Ramos. Selena Rising. David Rising the Third. Gabe Reyes. Alicia Richardson. Taylor Richardson.
Jennifer Ritchie. Kenny Rivas. Angela Rivera. David Rivera. Jeremy Rivera receiving the honors diploma. Linda Rivera. Jennifer Rogers. Jessica Romero. Zyda Rosales. Anthony Russ receiving the honors diploma. Betsy Russell. Nathan Scheibel receiving the honors diploma. Elizabeth Schiller. Victoria Schopo. Alicia Marie Sinkes. Joseph Chauver. Zach Schilwachter receiving the honors diploma. Nathaniel Silva. John Simpson. Latoya Sims. Kevin Slaughter. Takoya Sledge. Courtney Smith. Latoya Smith. Marcus Smith. Randall Smith. Coretta Snipes. Michael Solomon. Tiffany Spencer. Emily Stametti. Aaron State. David Stewart. Jason Stipe. Cassandra Taylor. Tiffany Taylor. Joanna Thomas. Katie Thompson. Sheldon Thompson. Serena Throckmorton. John Tilly. Jessica Toth, James Turnus, Daniel Truxel, Andrea Turton, Isaac Velez. Isaiah Velez, Matthew Waldron,
Piano Walton. James Washington. Marcus Washington. Leah Watson. Onika Whitaker. Jason White. Matthew White. Andres Whitfield. April Williams. Marquay Williams. Paul Williams. Nancy Wallencheck. Tiffany Wyatt. Jeremy Lee Yee, Jeremy Yee, and Brian Young. as we present to you the graduating class of 1999. Will you please be seated as the choir will lead us now in the Lord bless you and keep you.
This has been a production of Lorraine City Schools, WLCS TV 20.